Hello and welcome back to a Spider-Man video, which is it's been quite a while since I've done a Spider-Man video and some of you guys might actually remember this little figure. Um, I got him in a box of damaged figures nearly a year ago now, I think, actually. And yeah, it, he's been sat with one leg in a box for almost a year. And I think it's time to fix that now. So breaking his leg down into parts like I tend to do for any custom. As you can probably tell by the title and thumbnail, this one's going to be quite a different one, and I've got quite a lot to go over. So, obviously the foot there does have a hinge in, I won't be replicating the hinge because that's just too small and too high of a risk of a part to do. But there's the thigh, I'm going to have some issues with that internal hole I believe. You can see a good bit of detail actually on that knee piece, which I was surprised at the fact that it's actually got ridges in it. And obviously the peg for the thigh, which was surprisingly long, I didn't think it would come that far from the hip. And obviously our calf there as well. Not to mention these two very, very small pins that run through the knee to attach all the leg together. Now taking those away, I am going to be spray painting them, but not with the normal primer. This is just chalk spray from Montana, and this is just to help it actually 3D scan better than it would do, because the scanner I'm using is a blue light scanner, so it's not going to pick up the black or the red or warm tones in general, or just dark colours. So this makes sure it will scan really nicely. You can also see I've attached them to toothpicks just to put them on the rotating base to scan. And this is the scanner we're going to be using. This is the Revo Point Mini 2, and this thing is incredible. It has the ability to capture a small object in intricate detail with precision of up to 0.02 millimeters and a single frame accuracy of 0.05. It also has a 16 FPS capture speed, allowing 3D models to be created really quickly with up to 8 million points captured per second. A big improvement over the Mini 1, this has a higher megapixel RGB camera and a larger aperture, allowing for much better color scans. In addition, it has flash LEDs to improve marker tracking, which really help with features objects and the calibration of the scanner itself. As the name suggests, Mini. This thing is tiny, lightweight, and it, it's just very, very helpful. Um, so thank you very much to Revo Point for sending this. You can see here just a little overview. I won't bore you with everything that's in it. I'm sure you guys are more interested in how I use it. Here are those trackers that I was mentioning earlier. So this is my somewhat janky setup. Um, obviously I do just use my desk where I film, but this is how I scan. And you can see the movement I'm gonna be using to try and capture top to bottom of this object. This object being Spider-Man's calf. Now, one thing that's very helpful, you'll see in a minute that I am a little bit shaky while moving this and I'm maybe moving too fast in parts. The Mini 2 actually will automatically remove 40 frames from moving too fast and from being shaky and it will use its IMU for positional data for frame stitching, which means you don't have to do a lot of post-processing. Speaking of which, this is the software. You can go into one click, apply, and it will also give you an estimated time, but it will do most of the work for you. And if you don't like it, you can go back and do it yourself. Uh, I did go and rescan with some additional markers just using Bluetack there, which you can see helped the quality of the scan massively. And now I'm using just some of the tools that are available in the software to cover holes, tweak bits that I don't want there. Um, I have already done the one click on this scan itself. And this is me covering the holes. So you can detect the holes, you can go and click them, select them. And you can see I'm just making sure I get all of them. I'm ignoring the blue tack mounds that I've put around to help with the tracking because I'm going to be removing them in a minute anyway. And there you go, that's all the holes covered. And this is now one meshed object. So now I want to get rid of those little blue tack triangles. So I'm going to isolate them. And I do need to turn the value up here uh, just so it detects a bigger object. And you'll see it will highlight those as red. And then I can go to here, apply it, and it will remove those. And now I'm left with the actual scanned part that I need. So all I need to do is export it, which now it's a mesh I can do as an STL which you can see here, I won't bore you with what file I put it into, but there's the exporting process there. 
So with all the parts 3D scanned, uh, their bases removed in Blender, I haven't touched up any of the surfaces here. This is exactly how they came out from the scan. This, the detail on this is incredible. I have literally not done any work on these except from removing the toothpicks that they are attached to in the software. This is just the surface detail you get from this scanner. I am blown away, to say the least. Um, and I'm sure you can imagine this scanner is going to come in very handy with future projects. And it's going to change the way I make certain things from here on out. And bringing in the 3D print, obviously I'm 3D printing in black resin. Uh, I use black resin for a lot of my Etsy stuff anyway. And it saves me painting it black and it will just get a closer look to actual black plastic than painted black will. Uh, this isn't the cleanest like washing cure I've done. You can see there's some residue that got cured on there. Uh, I already made it and forgot to show it. But here you go, these are the pins I made in Tinkercad. They're just some cylinders with some notches taken out of them. And here's the leg all assembled, obviously with a bit of red paint on it. And in all honesty, this is insane. Like, creating an item this quickly, this was all done in one day, by the way. Absolutely mad. Uh, you can see I cut the pins a little bit wonky on the outside, or on the inside, so they don't look particularly nice. But you can see we've got full range of movement. Uh, there will be powdering of the joints because this is just ABS like resin. So these joints will loosen over time. But I don't plan on playing with this figure too much. I just wanted to not have him be missing a leg anymore. And then obviously I'll be attaching the foot once I've actually gone and done the web lines on him. The only bit of articulation I haven't replicated is the ankle joint. And I'm not too bothered about it. There isn't much range in the original joint anyway. And I don't want to risk causing any more breakages. Now using the thin end of my CD marker, I did go and do these black web lines. They're not the cleanest, they don't line up quite as perfectly with the original leg as I would hope. But at a quick glance, you're not going to notice them. I think the web lines came out fairly nice, all things considered, considering how small this is. Uh, and I did them entirely by hand and just eyeballed it. I also then gave it a matte varnish or a matte lacquer just to protect and seal in that permanent marker. And here it is, we fixed this Spider-Man figure. And what an easy process, I didn't have to fully 3D sculpt a new leg. I was able to 3D scan the parts, clean them up a tiny bit in Blender, uh, mainly just clean up the holes where sockets connected, because, you know, it can't really 3D scan all the way into a deep hole. The main issue I have is that the paint match isn't right. I made the red way too dark, the red on the original figure's leg is faded because it's so old. Um, it's more noticeable on the back. The back of the leg is much more faded for whatever reason. But this has all the exact same range of articulation. You can already see I'm powdering the uh, thigh a little bit there and scratching because obviously it's, again, it's a resin 3D print and not plastic. But considering the only main noticeable difference is the red, I think this is a huge success. This, yeah, I'm blown away. This guy sat on my shelf just as a piece of um, a piece of art, really. The fact that I get to look at it knowing that that leg's entirely 3D printed and scanned. I'm overjoyed with how this guy came out. From a distance, you can't even tell that it's a fresh leg. It just looks like this is how it came. Yeah, many thanks to Reverpoint for sending this scan in my way. What an incredible bit of kit. Uh, there'll be a link in the description and a discount code for you guys if you're interested in getting one for yourselves. Uh, if you have the money, I definitely recommend these things, although I am fully aware they're not cheap. Um, but yeah, this... Fantastic. But thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you guys in the next video.